I would like to be with you, but in the final run sprint towards COP21, it was too complex to come. More importantly, and before introducing my remarks, I wanted to tell you all how much we felt the uh, support that came from everyone and everybody to France for in these terrible days. The support you gave us that we will, should maintain COP21 as planned and that we should not cancel it. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for your courage, for the ones who have decided to come anyway, and be sure that we'll try all together to make this a very good opportunity, a success in Paris. And again, I wanted to thank you all for that. I wanted to share, at least, and so unfortunate not to be with you, our vision of a successful outcome in Paris and how we get there. And uh, with three steps. The first one is the main challenges of COP21. The second, why is scientific research on climate relevant for climate negotiation? And as, I can, and as an academic myself, I can testify from this. The relevance of the multidisciplinary dimension of climate policy in this process. On the first point, the, climate, the challenges of COP21. As we know all, and in particular in this room, climate change is one of the most important issues of our time. Causes are deeply embedded in the way we produce and use energy, and in fact, we develop. Its effects have the potential to impact every region of the Earth, every ecosystem, many aspects of the human endeavor, and every us, every one of us as a citizen and human being. To limit warning to two degrees C at the end of the century by the end of the century, emission we know, thanks to IPCC work, to be reduced by 40 to 70 percent below current level in 2050. We need a deep decarbonization of the economy. A two in three probability of holding warming under two degrees C or less will require a budget that limits future carbon dioxide emission to about 900 billion tons, roughly 10 times annual emission in 2014. Before presenting you the French vision of a successful outcome, I would like to analyze briefly international affairs and, uh, and the context in which we are working and explaining to you why for defining this strategy for a successful Paris outcome, uh, we use and I use in particular three academic concepts very important to define, to define the strategy. The first one is a two-level game theory that uh, Robert Putnam published many years ago now, explaining why in the 20-something years since the UN Climate Convention was adopted, progress has been so difficult to achieve because it has been transformed from an international issue to a domestic issue. That's why the two-level game, meaning the domestic discussion connected and related to international position, is now a key feature of what we are doing here. Robert Keohan regime complex is important as well to understand why a single top-down solution to climate change is no longer possible, but how a complex but coordinating system can be a second best option. This is particularly the case for climate change as many institutions, many fora, many type of decision making are impacting on climate change and not only, of course, what is happening within the new FCCC convention. And the third one is based on the rational expectation theory uh, first put, put word by in 60, 1961 by John Merce and used in particular by Robert Lucas in, in particular in the works published in 1976. Uh, because what uh, to try to make an expectation converge is in our view the best implementing mechanism that we can find for a treaty like this. So um, creating uh, a context and ecosystem where expectation that the low carbon economy will be the future will deploy itself uh, because that's the only vision that many actors can have is the best way to really in our view combat climate change and working on these three levels and these three conceptual elements uh, we developed uh, the, the strategy and the strategy is uh, in a way uh, combined and bended and captured 
but what we call the Paris Alliance, the four pillars working together. The four pillars, are, of course, the first one is the agreement between the governments, and because we need rules, we need a, a process, we need a vision. So that's why the agreement is the first part. And in this agreement, uh, we have to have a system that uh, can allow or, in a way, conduct countries to re consider their contribution from time to time. It's a bottom-up approach within a top-down framework for rules. So in the agreement, the more important issue is how progressively countries would be, would commit to a pathway consistent with the 2GWC. The, the second element of this Paris outcome will be this first step that many countries now, at the date, more than 161, I think, uh, countries have committed to uh, climate plans and climate policies, and it's a big achievement already by itself. And that is this first uh, self-decided, uh, dec nationally determined effort that even if they don't make up uh, to what we are looking for, is the best signal that countries have moved forward. And it's not only now responsibility of others, but as well responsibility for any countries. And that's very important because from the start and many academics around here have worked so much on the prisoner dilemma, the problems of international cooperation, um, meaning that now that the, all these countries doing that on a unilateral and voluntary basis because of this framework signals that we may have changed the way to, to see this prisoner dilemma. The third element is, is, which is very important and often connected with both the complex regime concept and the uh, expectation, the theory of Russian expectation, is to signal that many actors, not only governments, are acting and thinking that they can, they will implement action anyway, because they feel that it is a positive solution for themselves, for companies, for from of course local authorities. And uh, beyond Paris itself and the momentum of the COP, thinking of what they will do and implement after Paris. And of course, finance, because finance is a big piece, meaning this uh, translation of the real economy into finance, how the financial system is reacting or can be changed. And in, instead of financing high fossil fuel activities, high, high intensive fossil fuel activity to low carbon economy. So in this way, uh, we, we, we use a lot of understanding that we have to work both at domestic level and at the international level using this two-level game uh, theory. And it's, of course, part of all the diplomatic efforts that France have been developing. The second element that the regime complex, you have to operate at, on many, many places and not only in the agreement itself. And the expectation that has to be to make converge through, in particular, the signals that local authorities, all decision makers in many, many places, give that they feel that low carbon economy is there to stay and to develop. So Paris should be a beginning. The second point I wanted to, to touch with you is why is the scientific research on climate relevant for climate negotiation? Already have, of course, given some examples. Um, International relation theory provided us with many, many tools I'm using uh, daily in my work of, as a diplomat, which have been for, for this period. But more importantly than that, science is really a foundation for smart decision at COP21 and beyond. Solving the challenge of climate action, is, it requires ambition, dedication, leadership from government, the private sector, civil society, in addition to the scientific community. But this is a scientific community which informs, uh, who informs leaders, who informs citizens that give and provide the awareness of the problems, the size and the scope of the challenge and the way to respond. So science has been at the beginning of the understanding, is really in the monitoring of where, how we do, and will be at the end presenting solutions. So. And, and that's important to think in the future of the role of science in the governance of this new climate regime, wh where, where and how science will be embedded in the system, giving not only the traditional report of IPCC at the beginning of the COP, but coming back and back and again to monitor what governments are doing, but also what is the result of all the action of others. And when I see what we produce in the 
in the big event we organize in Paris at UNESCO uh, this year, our common future and the climate change, in the declaration, uh, we, we, we did a, a, a strong statement of the role of science. I'm reading it. The new climate governance regime is intended to strengthen confidence, support implementation, maximize benefits of international cooperation, and cement awareness that a new development model, low to zero carbon and resilient, is emerging. For science, the opportunity is progressively broadening from assessing risk and options to also understanding and enabling and helping enable transition pathways to sustainable, resilient economy and societies. This role of science from the identification of the problem, the way we reassess and send back uh, to government what they are doing and finding solution, in my view, is really where we will see the role of science. And we have many examples that science will be part of the system. For example, uh, how we understand INDCs today. That's declaration for government, but immediately many scientific teams have been assessing what, how it translates into pathways and carbon emission reduction. Uh, the economic aspect as well as um, re trying to incorporate that in the, in the modeling of climate. Another element we, we on the French presidency side together with, our, with now many governments, we encourage countries to develop long-term scenarios for their low carbon or low emission trajectories to 2050. And there we organize many research programs around that, in particular our deep decarbonization project pathways. And um, I, I think this problem of information and knowledge as an encouragement for government to be more clever, uh, more focused, uh, and to, to have information on, on what could be solution for themselves and not only trying to defend short-term position. So science and knowledge can change the way government see their interest and they perceive their interest. So that, for me, maybe is a more important message. Uh, and at the same time, in the, all the actors, the, the private actors, the local authorities, they need feedback from science. For example, on studies on impact at regional level, a key factor for local authority to adapt and to ha have really to build more resilient territories, absolutely central as an element. And many, uh, the impact on the ecosystems, the way, uh, the many, many interaction with natural resources, thinking only about oceans, for example, made things that science will always be the way our human societies understand what are, is our global impact on, on natural resources and on Earth. And there are more and more innovation or system transformation built with various stakeholders that science can help develop, think and develop, in particular, this uh, uh, breakthrough technology we, are, we, are, we have to find because we don't know how to store electricity efficiently by now. We have, we have beginnings, but we, we need much more. Uh, we need to know much more about the way uh, we can use carbon. We know we have really to make huge progress about clean energy and many and to find resilient uh, food systems that can cope with uh, much less water. Uh, all these are really big scientific challenges that are not only uh, industry or practition, practitioners can solve, but we need fundamental element of research to support that. So there is a challenge for science is of course totally immense. So after COP21, we will need to continue this innovation to evaluate them. And again, having science uh, proposing enabling solutions to be deployed. And finally, um, which is quite evident for all of you here, we, it's very relevant that we can't stay now in one discipline. We can't be captured in one discipline. And in particular the case in climate, but we know in many, many other areas, we, in the future, we will need a much better observation. We need a, a really a capacity to integrate social science uh, with physical science and bioscience. We need much more research everywhere because it's not only a, a transfer of technology, of knowledge, of information from one part of the earth to or countries to others. So we need the capacity, the local capacities. That's really now 
more evident than ever, and we need this multidisciplinarity. We need really to think the ecosystem in a way, much more integrated way. And we discover that, of course, through our IPCC process, but it has to really now uh, spill over many, many other forum disciplines. In conclusion, I, I just wanted to signal for you that for me it's just the beginning. Paris is just the beginning. In which a new regime, in which science would have to play a key role in the next decade by understanding and helping enable transition pathways to sustainable, resilient economy and societies. We have to invent this role of science in the new governance. Of course, through the reinforcement of IPCC, but not only, to know at what stage and how and when. For this regular review we will organize within the agreement, science can come in and tell us where do we stand and where and what we should do if we were reasonable. Thank you.